today on Rabbler. Nobody, nobody, the ombudsman nor the courts can interfere with the Senate. Senator Gingona hits supposed attempts to gag and bar witnesses in a Senate probe on the pork barrel scam. The Solicitor General asked the Supreme Court to allow the release of lawmakers and the President's pork barrel. And the International Monetary Fund cuts its growth forecast for the Philippines. I'm Makareig, sitting in for Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. Senator T.G. Gingona hits what he calls efforts to gag and bar witnesses from testifying in his committee's probe into the pork barrel scam. This report. I'm very, very disappointed. Senator T.G. Gingona fumes at Justice Secretary Leila De Lima. The chairman of the Blue Ribbon Committee expected principal whistleblower Ben Hurlui and other former aides of mastermind Janet Napoles to appear in the hearing Tuesday after a commitment from De Lima last week. But De Lima changes her mind. But after our conversation, um, Your Honor, I, I had to take a closer look at the law particularly the Ombudsman Law and uh, the um Ombudsman Rules of Procedure. And it was confirmed from my reading of the law that actually whenever a case has been filed with the Ombudsman, the general rule becomes no publicity if it will prejudice the disposition of a case this hearing is suspended. Thank you. The hearing abruptly ends. Gingona orders the Lima to bring the whistleblowers to the next hearing on Thursday. The senator says Senate President Franklin Drilon and the Lima are wrong in invoking the Ombudsman rules. Nobody, nobody, the Ombudsman nor the courts can interfere with the Senate. We are a separate branch of government. And this has been these powers have been put in the Constitution and upheld in a long line of cases of the Supreme Court. And I will not allow anyone, anyone, to diminish the power and the stature of the Senate. But Gingona is in for more disappointment. While Drilon signs the subpoena for the Lima and the whistleblowers, the Senate President announces the Senate will abide by the advice of Ombudsman Conchita Carpio Morales not to summon Napolis to its investigation. Drilon sought her opinion after Gingona asked him to sign a subpoena for Napolis. Out of prudence and out of respect for her office, we must defer to the judgment of the Ombudsman as she has acquired primary jurisdiction over the case. Gingona again cries foul. He says it doesn't make sense that Drilon summons the whistleblowers but refuses to subpoena the alleged pork barrel queen. The chairman adds the Senate is not bound by the advice of the Ombudsman. Senator Francis Escudero agrees. Nabasa ko ang letter ng Ombudsman. Wala sa kanyang poder na sabihin kung ano ang in aid of legislation at ano ang hindi. Wala rin sa kanyang poder na sabihin kung ano ang maaaring sabihin ni Napoles dahil desisyon lamang ni Napoles yun at marami. Escudero says the senators will meet to resolve the fate of the Senate's probe into its own members. The independence of the Senate or the authority of the Ombudsman. Beyond the legal debate, a power struggle ensues among the President's own allies in the Senate as more names get dragged into the pork barrel scam. They all claim to uphold the law and the public good, but whose interests are they really protecting? The Solicitor General asked the Supreme Court to lift the temporary restraining order stopping the release of lawmakers' pork barrel funds, the Malampaya Fund, and the President's Social Fund. Solicitor General Francis Hardeleza asked the court to release the Priority Development Assistance Fund, or PDAF, remaining for 2013, citing the welfare of scholars and health care beneficiaries. He also asked the court to dismiss the consolidated petitions seeking to abolish the PDAF. 
He says anomalies in the disbursements of the funds are a political problem and not for the High Court to resolve. The House of Representatives and the Public Works Department agreed to set a 24.5 billion peso allocation for each congressman to spend on infrastructure projects before public outrage forced lawmakers to abo abolish the current pork barrel system. Each member of the House used to have 70 million pesos worth of discretionary funds with 40 million pesos allocated for infrastructure projects. The House earlier arrived at a consensus to distribute their 25.2 billion peso PDAF to six line agencies for 2014. Of the realigned pork barrel funds, 35% or 8.2 billion pesos will go to the Public Works Department. The government captures a Moro National Liberation Front commander trusted by leader Javier Malik on day 16 of the Zamboanga crisis. Defense Secretary Voltaire Gazmin says Commander Salip Ijal and eight other MNLF fighters pretended to be hostages. They joined six civilians rescued by the police and the military on Tuesday. Commander Ijal was later presented by the Zamboanga City Police. Sirman Miswari at saka si Ustad Abil Malik ang puntahan namin Peace Caravan. Hindi namin alam ang ganito pala ang madat madatan namin. Ang message ko sa mga kasamahan ko, sana yung mga kayo nandyan sa labas, mag-isip-isip kayo muna, huwag kayo padalos-dalos na tingnan ninyo ang nangyari sa amin parang nahirapan sa hindi totoo sinasabi. Gazmin says the standoff is almost over. On Tuesday, the military launches an airstrike against the remaining rebels hold out in Barangay, Taluntalon, and Mariki. Gun battles still continue with the army losing two officers in separate encounters over the weekend. Hundreds of families are displaced in Olongapo after heavy rain forces the city to declare a state of calamity. But residents say the local government's rescue response leaves much to be desired. Natasha Gutierrez reports. Last na baha dito nung naranasan ko pinakamatas na baha dito, 85 eh. Aumar Mito lived in Zambales all her life. She has no words to describe the devastation. The floods are gone, leaving the houses almost destroyed. Food is scarce. Everyone was unprepared. Tapos mga bandang, ano ba yun, mga alas ocho, alas siete, yung kami mga kapitbahay namin, umakyat na sa bubong namin, kasi second floor kami eh, umakyat na sila sa bubong namin. Wala, walang, ano, walang mga rescue eh. Kasi halos lahat ng taga-olonga po talaga, lubog. It is a common complaint from Santa Rita residents. At the height of the rain Sunday night, rescuers were nowhere to be found. Lunis. Doon pa lang po kami sinundo ng mga rescuer. Pero nung lumaragasa, wala nang pumapasok. Dati ang gandito pa lang pumapasok na siya na nag-a-announce. O lumikas na kayo ngayon, wala, di ba no? Olongapo City was declared under a state of calamity Monday, September 23, after 16 of 17 barangays were affected by monsoon rain. Local government says it is the worst flooding the city has ever seen. City Councilor Ellen Dabu says the limited number of rescuers could not cope with the deluge of requests for help. Rescue team leader Antonio Ebuenga says there were only 24 rescuers to help the barangay's 45,000 residents. He admits they did not expect the water to rise so fast. All they could do was tell the people to go to higher ground. Naglayot kami dyan, di namin expected na ganong kalaki ang ibubuhos ng ulan na yung baha na makikita namin. Kasi ngayon lang itong nangyari, ito ang pinakamalaking baha dito. Po. Hindi kami makapag-penetrate dahil sa lakas talaga ng current, papasok dyan sa loob dyan. Kasi mas masya, masyado mababa yung purpuno eh. Mababa ang lugar na yan. Kaya hindi kami makapag-penetrate. Pumasok man po kami dyan, hindi na kami makakalapas. About 600 families are displaced and three are dead in the city. It is a wake-up call for Alongapo. An obvious lack of disaster preparedness by the local government and the residents turned a rainy weekend into a disaster. 
Locals are appealing for food, mattresses, and clothes, all of which were swept away during the floods. But their number one need is drinking water. With resources and livelihood gone, rebuilding their homes is only their second priority to finding their next meal. Natasha Gutierrez, Rappler, Olongapo City. The Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines, or CBCP, says it stands firm against contraception, abortion, and gay marriage, despite Pope Francis' comments urging a change of tone on these issues. In an interview published last week, the Pope urged a break from what he calls the Church's harsh, harsh obsessions with gays, contraception, and abortion. But CBCP President Jose Palma says he is not saying that what the church deemed before as wrong is now right. He is merely telling us to be more compassionate. Church leaders in the Philippines are strongly opposed to the reproductive health law. The Supreme Court suspended the law in March so judges could hear arguments on its constitutionality. RH law author Ed Selagman says the Pope's comments put the Filipino church leaders on the defensive. He adds, I think they will have to reconcile their doctrines and make themselves attuned to the liberal thinking of the new Pope. The International Monetary Fund expects the Philippines to grow at 6.75% in 2013, lower than the previous 7% estimate the agency made in July. The IMF's 2014 forecast of 6% is unchanged. These estimates are within the country's official growth target of 6% to 7%, which was already surpassed by actual growth rate of 7.5% in the second quarter, making the Philippines among the fastest growing economies in the world. The IMF's Rachel Van Elken says the Philippines' strong fundamentals prepare the country to adjust smoothly when the U.S. Federal Reserve eventually ends its stimulus program. Let's now look at Rappler's Wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 6, officials say Kenyan troops are in control of Nairobi's Westgate shopping mall after attackers killed dozens of shoppers and staff in a three-day-long siege. The vast center was quiet 60 hours after gunmen stormed the complex. The Red Cross says 63 people were recorded missing. The army says almost 200 are wounded in the attack, with at least 11 Kenyan troops injured in intense gun battles. At number 7, the United Nations says new HIV infections drop by a third overall since 2001 and more than halved among children. Globally, 2.3 million people contracted the AIDS virus last year, over a third fewer than in 2009 and 52% down from 2001. Hailing progress in distributing antiretroviral drugs, the UN body says it may be possible to slash new infections among kids by 90% in the next two years. And at number 9, fire blamed on arson chars vast areas of a nature reserve in Ecuador's capital as officials declare the blaze under control. It took 800 firefighters nearly 20 24 hours to bring the fire under control, which broke out Sunday in a huge expanse of Quito, known as the Parque Metropolitano. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Rap. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page, which crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories that got the most clicks. Let's look at stories that made it to today's Mood Navigator. Here we have Olongapo City under a state of calamity. It has 74% of readers feeling sad, 7% angry. Class suspensions for Monday, September 23. 57% of people feel happy, 16% sad. But oddly enough, on the next day, class suspensions Tuesday, September 24, has 49% of people feeling angry, 15% sad. And if you take that with the other stories in red, still on the pork barrel scam and the UP plagiarism story, there are actually three stories about the plagiarism incident, three out of 10 in the mood navigator. If you combine them all, today most people are still angry. 
That's Rappler's newscast for today, Tuesday, September 24, 2013. Visit rappler.com and watch your newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Ai Makaraig and as we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.